The Seven Hermetic Principles You might have heard about the Kabbalion or Hermeticism once or twice in your life, but what exactly are they? We'll break down the Seven Hermetic Principles and explain how you can apply them in your own life. Let's begin. Okay, so what is it and why is it important when discussing the laws of the universe? Hermeticism is a tradition that goes as far back as the first century, believed to be created by Hermes. It's actually one of the oldest non-Christian belief systems that's still practiced today. The documents are also thought to have inspired and influenced many great philosophers and artists during the Italian Renaissance. Hermeticism has stayed so relevant through the centuries because it tries to answer the burning questions humankind has had since the beginning of time. Like, why do we exist? What's the purpose of life? And by doing this, Hermeticism finds a way to work with both scientific and religious beliefs. According to the Kabbalion, the seven Hermetic principles are supposed to guide our understanding of the universe. Each chapter of the book is devoted to explaining and illustrating each of the seven principles. So let's dive in. Number one, the principle of mentalism. This principle emphasizes that everything in the universe is mental. The universe is a living mind that's connected to all other minds. Once you understand the truth of mentalism, you begin to understand how we're capable of shaping our reality using just our thoughts. If we think the right thoughts, the right actions will follow, and the right results will follow as well. So, spend time reflecting on your true passions and your life's purpose. Once you do, your thoughts will be aligned with the universe, so you can create the reality you desire. Intuition plays a major role in mentalism. When you're in tune with yourself, you begin to navigate your life in a way that you'll find yourself naturally taking certain actions and getting results faster in your life. Do you ever get that gut feeling about something and end up being right? That's your intuition, so make sure you listen to it. We talked about intuition more in depth in our full guide to the Master Key System series, so check that out if you want to learn more. Number two, the principle of correspondence. The base of this principle is the idea that there are constant links between the mental, physical, and spiritual planes. So, if we want to understand the patterns we see in our lives, then we have to look at these aspects of our lives. Pay attention if you find yourself having gut feelings we discussed, of things that are right to do versus wrong to do. When we're in harmony, our body gives us hints if the path we're on is aligned with our true purpose. So if you find yourself feeling miserable performing a task or being around a certain person, it might be time to analyze whether you're actually meant to be doing that thing being with that person or at that place. Meditation helps a lot with this because it helps us analyze our thoughts from a third person perspective without judging. Sit down in a chair in a quiet room for 15 minutes and just breathe and see what thoughts your mind keeps throwing at you. Don't judge the thoughts or try and fight them. Just analyze them objectively. This will give you the ability to decipher between the true and the false. The principle of correspondence is also linked to the idea of repeating patterns, small and large. It's a reminder to evaluate the repeating themes in your life and reflect on the mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of your life. For example, low energy in your spiritual life can manifest itself in low physical energy in your body. Once you learn to align these three features by building your intuition and self-awareness, you'll begin to master the principle of correspondence. Number three, the principle of vibration. If you've studied the law of attraction, you're probably already familiar with the idea that like attracts like energy. But to summarize this principle, everything in this world has a vibration, even the table you're sitting at or the chair you're sitting on. Even the smallest particle in the universe has a vibrational frequency that affects the things around it. This principle tells us that high energy beings are magnetically drawn towards one another. On the other hand, low energy particles gravitate towards other sources of low energy. So if you want to have a happy and fulfilling life, you should aim to become a source of high energy. Then you will attract higher vibrational people and situations into your life. 
Number four, the principle of polarity. We touched on the law of polarity in our Laws of the Universe video. This principle explains that everything has a dual nature. So, we all contain love and hate, positivity and negativity, sadness and joy. It's up to us to recognize these contrasts and reflect on what they mean to us. For example, without knowing what sadness feels like, it's hard to focus on and appreciate happiness and abundance when it comes into our lives. One way to use polarity in your life is to remind yourself to reflect on something you have right now that you hoped and prayed for months or years ago. Remember how it felt when you wanted this thing so bad, but you didn't have it. Use this to build up your gratitude for what you already have, which will in turn open up new ways to get what you want next. One of the most important takeaways from this principle is to realize that everything that doesn't work well for you helps to guide the way towards its opposite, the thing that will work for you. Number five, the principle of rhythm. One of the major things we can learn from this one is that everything is in constant motion. There's a pattern to the changes we experience. Everything in life goes through cycles that move from birth to death and then rebirth from the Earth's seasons to our physical bodies. Remember that no situation in life is permanent. If you're going through a hard time right now, it will get better. You just might not know exactly when yet. And if things are going great right now, remember to appreciate it. Those great experiences will soon become fond memories. And if you don't take time to cherish them while they're here, you'll wish you had. The principle of rhythm makes for a good meditation practice. When you're meditating, it can be a great time to reflect on what you've experienced in the past day, the past month, and the past year, and practice gratitude for how far you've come. Remember that all you really have is the present moment, so fully immerse yourself in each part of your cycle to ensure that you learn and experience the most you possibly can. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. This principle describes the way in which all of our actions and experiences relate to other events in our lives. For example, all those times you chose to work out instead of being lazy will pay off in the future. And when you look back, you'll see the correlation in your health with the amount of effort you put in to take care of yourself. A more controversial aspect of this principle is the idea that there's no such thing as pure luck. There's always a reason for everything that happens. The idea of luck can be correlated to the amount of effort you put into something. If one person tries a hundred times at something and another person tries 20 times at something, the odds are that person number one will have a higher chance of being quote unquote lucky. But this is simply because person one put himself in the position to get lucky by attempting over and over again. Luck wasn't necessarily the cause of his success. He put in the work and the effect was in his favor because he took control. Essentially, you become the cause more often than the effect. So decide what you want to do and who you want to be. Then plan out the precise steps you need to take to attain those goals. The more you try, fail, learn, and try again, the quote unquote luckier you'll become. Number seven, the principle of gender. This principle explains that masculine and feminine are found in everything, not just in people, but in all aspects of our mental, physical, and spiritual lives. You don't have to believe in traditional gender stereotypes and gender roles to understand this principle. It has more to do with the notion of different masculine and feminine energy. Masculine energy is assertive, penetrating, and transformative, while feminine energy is reflective, protective, and nourishing. There are times in our life where we need to switch between one or the other. There are times for grinding and working hard, but there's also times for relaxing and reflecting. When you can master the ability to know when it's appropriate to switch between the two, you'll master the principle of gender. Again, meditating and staying in tune with your mental health is really important here. Once you truly know yourself, what makes you happy, sad, tired, 
or energized, you'll be able to intuitively understand when it's time to work harder on your goals or when you need to take a step back, relax, and assess the direction you're going. Using the seven hermetic principles will give you a true understanding of the laws of the universe and how you can apply each one in different aspects of your life. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.